Hey mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I'm spending a little bit of time in the forest with a beautiful specimen of Lactifluus volimus, also known as the fish milky cap. I'm kind of in a rush because I have an appointment to make, so I'm going to make it snappy. But this is a mushroom that is edible if you're interested in uh, foraging for wild mushrooms. This is a really good one, but you have to get over the um, difficulties of collecting it because Lactifluus volimus is uh, a milky capped mushroom and so I will show you what that means. Basically there's a lot of different mushroom species in two genera so you have Lactarius and Lactifluus and both of them have this charming uh, trait where when you damage them they bleed uh, or uh, this is called a latex and in the case of Lactifluus volimus you have very abundant latex that also smells very much like latex gloves that have been worn by somebody with very dirty hands. Like they're just funky and it's very sticky. Additionally, as the, uh, you know, mushroom sort of sits around for a little bit, these spots will start to turn a uh, dark brown color. And so they, you know, kind of stink to high heaven and they are drippy and sticky. And the, you know, it, it's not horrible, but it does take a good bit of washing uh, to get rid of this uh, latex juice that comes out of the, the gills of Lactifluus volimus. But nonetheless, when you cook them, uh, you know, the fact that they smell bad and bleed and turn brown really uh, recedes into the background and they become very much like delicious seafood. And so I had a really wonderful uh, uh, fish uh, curry last summer. I attended a mushroom camp with Arlene and Alan Bassett, who are prolific authors of all kinds of mushroom books, but also uh, very good at, uh, you know, sharing delicious treats with us. And one of those things was a fish curry featuring this mushroom. Okay, so besides what I just showed you, it's got all this, you know, bleeding juice. You have a mushroom that is uh, sort of a like light terracotta color. It very much looks like a, a pot that you would have on your front porch. And it has a little bit of a roughness to it as well. And so, uh, you know, the comp like comparing it to pottery is not all that bad of a, a, you know, metaphor if you're trying to get your head around what it feels like to interact with this mushroom. You also very frequently have these sort of concentric growth zones. That is an exceptionally common feature both for Lactarius and Lactifluus, again, the two genera that contain the milky mushrooms. Uh, but, you know, in the case of Lactifluus volimus, you very frequently have, you know, very clear growth zones and it's kind of uh, a little bit roughened. And then underneath you have sort of a pale, a little bit yellowy orangey uh, gills, but they're primarily pale. And of course, as you damage them, you just get tons and tons of latex. And so, you know, if you are interested in collecting mushrooms and you start uh, learning about your milky mushrooms, some of them will, uh, you know, exude juice very slowly. Some of it, it's, it's quite scant. Lactifluus volimus, I think the uh, species epithet volimus is in reference to the volume and the sheer amount that this mushroom weeps from its gills. Uh, as far as the stem is concerned, it's really nice. It's kind of, um, you know, smooth and oftentimes just a little bit, um, you know, sort of, uh, it has f not, not features necessarily, but it isn't just like a straight stick. So oftentimes you have a little bit of convolution or, or what have you, but it is a smooth, uh, you know, uh, surface. And then on the inside, uh, it looks like it's a little bit hollowed out, but sometimes that is, you know, full of kind of floofy material. So anyway, this is a really good mushroom, I think, uh, to learn. And if you're, again, interested in foraging, this is one that can be a little bit challenging to really believe in uh, because, you know, I'm holding it right now. It just doesn't smell very nice. And, uh, you know, nonetheless, all of the unpleasant things about it go away and are replaced by very nice sort of um, seafood and in a good way, seafood, like nice and firm and like a, a, like a delicious fish of some kind. Anyway, um, Lactifluus also has a number of other species in it that you could very commonly see. Uh, the uh, Lactarius piperata species group is another in this sort of smaller genus of milky mushrooms. So Lactarius was the original genus and Lactifluus was split off. And so you have Lactifluus volimus, uh, Lactifluus corrugus, I think is, um, it's the corrugated milky cap and it has a lot of similar features except it's a little more hairy and a little more red. 
And then also um, Lactarius piperatus and its relatives, and that is uh, the peppery milky cap. And similarly, those mushrooms bleed a lot of juice, and instead of being like latexy and sticky and gross smelling, it is very peppery hot. And so you have to, you know, not touch your eyes and not pick your nose. But anyway, it's a really fun genus to get to know uh, because, you know, you have some pretty dramatic looking mushrooms. So I got to go wash my hands and go make my appointment, but I hope you are having a good mushroom season. I certainly am. And if you haven't tried Lactofluus volimus before, it is uh, at least worth one whirl. I would say several in my case. It took, I think, three or four times before I'm like, yes, I fully believe that it's worth my time and keeping these mushrooms separate from the rest of my collection so that they don't stink up the bunch and put them, you know, in a state of, of sticky disgustingness. Anyway, have a good one.